what would you do? Leave a comment down below. What would be your move from here? Have you let Mother Python keep the eggs? What was your experience? What what happened there? Did you have any issues? Did you did it go well? Leave a comment down below. Let us know. I'd love to hear and read about the stories you have that are happening. English. Stick around to the end of the video. You'll get to see bonus footage of Eli catching the biggest bass I've ever seen anybody catch out of this lake. What do you think, Eli? Should I show him? Yeah. Top of the morning, friends and family. We had a tragedy strike here. It was kind of a slow, drawn-out tragedy that ended in ultimate tragedy when it comes to one of our clutches here, specifically our blood python clutch with sangria. We're going to talk about exactly what I believe happened and hopefully prevent y'all from making the same mistake before we dive into looking at the deceased clutch and the one animal that managed to crawl out and then still pass away, I wanted to first focus on some more happy stuff, which is these snakes right here that have, for whatever reason, I still just haven't put anything on Morph Market. I, I don't know if I'm actually like subconsciously waiting for the election to be over before I, I start listing stuff. I just, I just haven't. They're, they're definitely well beyond ready to be listed well up to size, eating, <laughs> they're like eating small rats at this point, which is great. Um, I'm just not in a rush to see them go. This, this is like one of the best clutches we've ever produced here at Triple B, and I, I'm not super in a rush to see any of these snakes leave. I think that's probably part of it. I just want to do an update on this one. I've even forgotten what this is. <laughs> it's been, so I'd say, definitely a stranger clown, uh, yellow belly, spot nose, red stripe. And I'll, I'll put I'll put the actual genetics right there on the screen because I might, my brain is not uh, able to re remember what exactly they were. This is a phenomenal snake right here, don't you think? Just beautiful. Possibly one of the coolest looking snakes we've ever produced, except that there is actually one snake that is cooler looking than this that we did produce. That's this GHI Mojave Yellow Belly Stranger clown. Just the coolest snake possibly that we've ever produced here at Triple B, in my my opinion. Uh, the fact that she looks so much like mom, but yet cooler with more pizzazz is just fantastic. Super light right now. As I've mentioned in several videos, the lightness of this snake is not always this light. Just like mom, she will go jet black, and then also what she's doing now, which is this crazy light silver color, with that little bit of stranger uh, tinge going in the back saddle there. Uh, just just one of the coolest looking snakes. And somebody pointed out on a video, it actually says LA right in her thing right there. So if you live in Los Angeles and you want to try and purchase this snake for that reason, maybe you can. Maybe you can't. I don't know. Ooh, and other news. Turns out, for the first time ever, I'm actually going to attend the NARBC show in St. Louis, Missouri, or Missouri, or however you guys say it out there. That's coming up next month. I will be there, hanging out, filming video. Come say hi. I was gonna say one more snake, but actually two more snakes, a brother and sister combo, both Enchi Clown Pied, one very high white and one very low white. I thought it was really cool, and just, again, Enchi Clown Pied, just any kind of Clown Pied combination is one of our favorite combos of ball python to hatch out here at triple b has been since the beginning always will be just love them just love them they look so awesome they were a really big hit at our local reptile show the other weekend had them in the same little display and people were like is that one snake is it two snakes is just the whiteness you know people are just so mind blown by pied you know the general public it's it's just something that probably will never change just really cool snakes all right that's enough uh, delaying let's talk about sangria's clutch and what happened there so as i mentioned at the beginning and as you have been watching this channel, you know that the last few years I've been kind of transitioning to letting the moms keep the eggs rather than putting them into the incubator. And that has gone really, really well. Have a very high hatch rate, almost all snakes hatching out that with a couple of exceptions. Last season had Sangria, our blood python here, do the same thing and keep the eggs and she didn't keep all of them. So what happened this season is 
I went to see that she had eggs, <laughs> which was amazing because I, I wasn't entirely sure if she had ovulated or not, even though, because sometimes she looks like she swallowed a football, but then it won't actually be an ovulation and it just looked like she swallowed a football because maybe she actually did swallow a football sized rat, but she did have eggs. Obviously she laid them and I went in there and she had kicked a couple out and there was a couple slugs. So I moved the couple slugs. I put the couple that were good eggs that she had kicked out back in. Those ones that she had kicked out after a few days ended up not going well and starting to go bad. So I got them out of there so their decaying wouldn't spread to the other eggs and mold issues. I went ahead and did my dusting of a little bit of athlete's foot powder like I do when there's any type of mold introduced or any kind of over moisture thing happening. You know, just to cut to the chase of what I think was the bad thing that happened is that I think it was just too much space. I think that the environment was not controlled enough uh, this season for whatever reason. And it just they slowly but surely like over the course of weeks and weeks, a couple more eggs would go bad here. A couple more eggs would go bad there. I think it was just a temperature issue, something that could have been mitigated by doing artificial incubation, which is actually what I will do from now on with sangria. That or I feel like a hide box could have been implemented or some kind of lay box so that she could control the humidity a little better, maybe control the temperature a little bit better. Um, rather than being stuck on the bottom of the tub. I think that had a lot to do with it. Same thing happens with all the ball python eggs, but all except for three eggs this season as with the ball pythons, they, they all hatched fine, healthy, with the exception of the one runt from the clown pie that didn't make it, unfortunately. But yeah, everything else went well. I, I just, uh, you know, it went to the point where like literally all of the eggs went bad except for one. And then that one pipped out of the egg, came out. I was like, sweet, at least we got one. That was going to be the silver lining on this horrible tragedy of a clutch. Then that one didn't crawl the egg all the way. And next time I went to go look at it, it was gone. So we lost literally every single egg and the one baby that actually hatched out from Sangria's clutch, which sucks big time. I've fortunately kind of grown accustomed that not all things make it. And... As much as it sucks, it's just kind of part of breeding. Not all the animals are going to make it. But this one was a little extra painful because it's like I just slowly over the course of weeks watched them slowly not make it to the finality of none making it. So it just sucked. Yeah, suck, suck, suck. But my hope in sharing this with you is that you will look at your temperatures. Maybe if you're if you're looking to let the mother python keep the eggs as I have been doing, then maybe a, a lay box or maybe, a, like I said, I think it was just too big of a tub for her to lay in. So I think she just needed a smaller space that was more controlled and didn't have as much fluctuation in temperature, even though this room stays always between like 76 to 81 degrees ambient temperature in the room. And then I've got a ambient humidity control over there as well if you watched my you know snake room video from however long ago you you know that this room is fairly well controlled but yet still that that fluctuation in that bigger space what i think was just too much for those eggs to handle clearly because they didn't make it so going forward i will bite the bullet and turn on the incubator and artificially incubate sangria's eggs or I might try the lay box thing next season. Either or. What would you do? Leave a comment down below. What would be your move from here? Have you let mother pythons keep the eggs? What was your experience? What what happened there? Did you have any issues? Did, you, did it go well? Leave a comment down below. Let us know. I'd love to hear and read about the stories you have that are happening. English.
Dude, that's the biggest bass that I've ever seen anybody catch out of this lake. That's like a two pounder. Can I, can I flea hold it? Can I flea hold it? Oh, my God. Can I, can I flea hold that jumbo? Oh, my God. <laughs> wow, dude. Nice oh, job, bud. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. How did I just do that? Can I flea hold it? That is it? definitely the biggest bass yeah. I've seen anybody catch at this lake, for sure. My. Can nice I hold work. it? No, thanks, sir. Please. Well, thank you guys for watching the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed the footage of Eli catching that bass, dude. That was, again, I've never, you just catch like bluegill and stuff out of this lake. That was, I've never seen anybody catch a bass that big. Of course, Eli, the family fisherman, would do it. Champion. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we'll see you on the next video.